Hello, Malik Carrington here, Family Budget Fisherman. Thank you for tuning in to this, another special episode on this channel. Well, you read it in the thumbnail and in the description below. I finally did a little bit more than 40 hours of fishing on this very beautiful rod here. And we're gonna have a nice little discussion on my thoughts of its performance. Let's get started. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are a lot of fantastic things to say about this Meta Series rod. It overall, it performed very well. Uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but for me living here in Reading, I actually broke my personal best on this. Let me show you the picture right here. Uh, as you can see, I, I caught this with a Berkeley Power Bait hand pour triple colored worm um, and I, I had an amazing time with it so I, this this rod performed very well and surprised me on handle how it handled that big fish uh, so in terms of it giving me something new and impressive I didn't see that okay and I I, as you know, I don't have the rod reel on here now, but I had a Shimano Vanford on here that I was throwing it with. I, I took it off because I'm going to put something on here that more conforms with the price point of this particular reel. Uh, but I compared it to the Bass X and I threw similar lures, uh, uh, you know, reaction baits. I threw finesse baits. I have this, I have a drop shot on here, even though this rod is not a drop shot rod. Uh, I just wanted to know what it, what it felt to use this as a drop shot rod, so I did. But, um, but yeah, so I, I compared it to the Bass X, the new Bass X. I also compared it to the Dobbins, okay? The Dobbins, as you can see, this is my son's favorite rod because it has the, the kayak <laughs> style uh, but here the very short butt in uh so he uses this a lot i mean he caught him he caught last week he caught several three pound fish and handled them gracefully on this but having said that um i compared this dobbins of the meta to the dobbins and i also compared it within the product within the company's product lines so i compared it to the Omen series, which is, as you all know, is one of my favorite rods um, of all time. It, it's in the top five of my favorite rods of all time. Number one, of course, is the Ugly Stick, and that will never be supplanted. I don't care what rod I ever choose. Uh, and I compared it to the Omen. Now, I will say this about the Meta Series rod. If the Meta Series rod was available to me before any of the other rods that I've just shown you. I would have bought the Meta Series rod and not bought the other rods because of number one, the 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 technology, you know, the 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 line guides. I like the line guides here even better than the ones that are on the Dobbins. Okay, okay. Um, I like the way this rod performs when it came to reaction baits. It reminds me a lot of the X Pride B in terms of its desire to want to throw and retrieve reaction baits. It's almost a spirit in it. But I think it's because this rod, in my opinion, this rod, I believe, was built around the casting version of this rod. And since we're talking about Gerald Swindle, we're talking about competitive bass fishing. He uses a bait cast rod, primarily. I think he uses a spinning rod on occasion, but primarily, I think there are only two spinning rods in the series. And I, it seems to me that they were built around it. Remember, rod blanks are rod blanks. You can make a rod blank a casting rod or a rod blank a spinning rod. And I think that these rod blanks that they were using um, are very similar 
in performance to the casting version, but they made them spinning rods. And so I think that's the reason why the reaction um, spirit, as it were, is in this, in this rod. That said, as you saw in the picture, I actually did uh, catch a, a fish, a good sized fish on a finesse technique. So that's one thing to say. If I had been able to purchase this first, I would not have purchased these others because I prefer the way this performs to the other three. Now, because I have them, I, I'm not going to be purchasing very many of these. Uh, now, I the Omen. Here are some, here are some things of the Omen. Um, the price point between the Omen and the Meta, in my opinion, are too close. Uh, they finally bumped up the Muse. The Muse now is a $200 rod, $200 plus dollar rod, compa uh, competing with the Zodius, where before the Muse, not Fuse, the $450 rod, the Muse with an M, that rod was, was I think, about a 174 rod, 175 rod, uh, 175 dollar rod, which was too close in price point to the Meta. Uh, this rod here, this Omen series rod, um, ranges between $120 and $140, depending on what you get. And then this right here is $150. So the price point is very, very close. And they, these rods perform uh, very similarly. Now, the, the disadvantage, or I should say the advantage that the Omen has over the Meta Series rod is the line guides. This has, I think, 11 guides on it. Let's see. Let me put the... Meta series down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the tip. So eleven. Whereas the meta series, I believe it has nine or ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the tip. So um, there are two less guides on here than there are on here, and they are, as I, if I can stand them up. As you can see, they're similar in height. So this Omen series rod that I'm holding is a seven foot one. And this Meta series rod is a seven foot two. So it's a one inch difference. Uh, did they have enough room to put two extra guides? Of course they did. Why they didn't, I don't know. Uh, but you can, I can tell because I use these rods all the time that there is a difference in how the guides, um, in how the rod performs. And I can notice that little bitty tiny difference in the rod's performance because you feel the slap on, on the blank a little bit more coming off of the spool. Uh, and it's not to say that the stripper guide doesn't slow it down or that the runner um, doesn't give it um, a straight edge to it as it were. It's just that if the guides are a little bit closer and you put them in there, you feel less of the slap, particularly between the real seat and the stripper guide. You know, that's just my view of it. So having said that, when I was pitching and flipping, um, when I cast heavy baits, because this, this rod can, take, can throw a bait up to three quarter ounces, legit. Um, and I was throwing it with a 10 pound test, uh, floral clear, as, as you all know. Uh, I went down to eight pound test for a little while, but I was throwing primarily 10 pound test on it. And, uh, it, you know, it, the heavier the weight, the less the line slap on the rod. So do I recommend you purchase this rod? Yes. If you have not made an investment in these other rods, try this rod. One of the things that you can do, and uh, <laughs> I, I know I'm... <laughs> No, I'm not even going to suggest it. Yeah, I am. Uh, Amazon is selling these, and you can get a nice discount on Amazon. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's a good laugh. That is a true statement, but y'all know why I'm saying that. But I, I have to tell you that there is a discount available on Amazon. Uh, there is also, you, Dick Sporting Goods has a good sale on these. Now, Having said that, I think the Omens, I think they're almost clearing these out. I mean, they're, they're sub $100 now, nowadays, if you, you can find them around. Uh, but you can get the new rods 
at about maybe ten dollars more at 110 105 bucks in some cases uh i know for a while dick sporting goods was running that um you take twenty dollars off of 150 so you could find these rods and get a nice little discount on them i think omnia fishing um if you use a, a 15 percent uh code that's you know other people have you can get a nice discount there so the the rod is worth purchasing uh like i said it performs very well my favorite ironically enough was throwing rattle traps oh my lord even though i you know i i caught that big fish on that triple pour berkeley power bait worm my favorite was throwing rattle traps i mean i really enjoyed throwing half ounce rattle traps and catching fish on them as a matter of fact um either tonight uh, after bible study or early saturday morning that's all i'm going to be throwing with this is rattle traps the whole morning and uh and and see what i come up with as you all know aesthetically this is one beautiful rod in every way shape imaginable that j36 torre carbon uh, blank is amazing. Uh, the seven foot two medium heavy one quarter on one side, three quarters on the other side is worth your investment. Uh, now, is this better than say the Mojo Bass Rod? Um, I would say it's right there with the Mojo Bass Rod on the St. Croix side. Is this better than Halo? Yes, it's a more sensitive rod than Halo rods. Is this rod more sensitive than any of the six cents rods just about just about in in and i'll and i'm saying that because the rod blank is a lot more sensitive you you have to compare 24 ton uh japanese torre carbon to 36 ton japanese torre carbon and that's where your sensitivity comes in it's definitely more sensitive than almost every six cents spinning rod and um I would argue that the casting rods are not much different because blanks are blanks. Uh, so when you compare 24 ton, and you can call six cents and find out. 24 ton to 36 ton, you know, it, it, that's where it is. Uh, so I would say if you're going to go in this direction, try one of these rods. Try the, the casting version or the spinning version. See what you come up with. I think that you're going to have a good time with this rod. So that's my review on this rod. If you think I missed anything, please tell me in the comments below. Um, let me close out with this. I am a sport fisherman. Most of you know this, okay? I don't have to say that. And so, you know, in some of the comments uh, recently on this video, I mean, on other videos, of course, um, People were trying to get me to specify, well, you know, what I'm talking about when I say fishing. Obviously, contextually, I'm talking about sport fishing. I'm talking about what I do, okay? Um, also, I made mention of the fact that, there, that the most expensive Daiwa uh, reel is the Exist. Yes, I know it's the Saltiga in absolute sense, but I'm a freshwater fisherman. There are... I mean, you can go with the ballistic. The Daiwa ballistic can be saltwater and freshwater, but I'm a freshwater fisherman. So I just wanted you all to know some things I'm going to share with you, take into consideration what this channel is all about. You don't see me out catching sharks on reefs or inshore. So if I say the Exist is the most expensive, I, I, I'm talking about freshwater. I got a peach tree limb that just fell. <laughs> At any rate, hey, do me a favor. Don't break your family's budget by trying to buy any of this fishing equipment. But by every legal and ethical means, get out there and break your personal best. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and be blessed.